Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Tops. Uh, this week we are going to be discussing our favorite actors slash actresses. Yes, and uh, thank you the viewers for submitting um, your suggestions because we had no idea what to talk about tonight so that was very helpful to give us something to start rolling with. Yes. Alright, you want to start us off? I will start us off now. Uh, like every week I have five, but um, these ones aren't in any particular order, just so you know, so it's not like I like any one of them better than anyone else. Okay, uh, so I guess first I'll say um, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, he's in such films as The Avengers, the Iron Man series, as well as the Sherlock series, not the BBC, the movie series. Um, he's actually a really good actor, he's perfect for the character of Iron Man. Um, and also Sherlock, he's a really good Sherlock. Yes, yes, I like Iron Man. <laughs> Um, and I like Sherlock as well. He is very he, he does a very good job in those movies. It's an interesting portrayal of, Sher of Sherlock. Yeah, it's very a very um, kind of gritty actually. Yeah. Okay, well I'll go to my first one. Mine aren't in any particular order. Um, I'll start with one that um, I debated on putting on here, um, and that is Rod Serling from the television series The Twilight Zone. That's because he's not really um, acting in the show, but he is the uh, host of the show. And uh, if you hear his voice, if you, anyone has ever seen any episodes of The Twilight Zone, you know who he is. Um, he opens all the episodes and, and explains what's going on. And uh, he is very ominous, yet um, welcoming. And he makes you want to watch the show, but he sort of sets the mood for the entire, the entire episode. So Yeah, that, that, that is an interesting choice. And uh, he does have a very... It is it's just a very interesting opening. He has a good narrator voice, I guess you could say, but it's not like a typical yeah. narrator voice. Anyways, the next one I put on my list is uh, Jeremy Renner from movies such as The Avengers, and in which he plays Hawkeye, also Mission Impossible 4 and Born Legacy, um, and Thor, and some other ones. Anyways, uh, I just enjoy watching him act. I mean, he's, he may not might not be one of the most amazing actors out there, but I really enjoy watching him act. He also, he almost has this like dry sense of humor, especially in action movies like uh, Born or uh, Mission Impossible 4. And he kind of seems to be taking, I mean not taking over, but uh, maybe being set up to take the place of uh, the main characters in Born and Mission Impossible. And he's just, he's just an interesting character to watch. And he just seems more fun, not as dark as uh, he could be, I guess. Yeah. So that's just interesting. Yeah, I enjoy him. He plays a he plays in a variety of films that we enjoy watching, and so that's um, yeah. that's something you don't always think about. And he's usually a supporting role too. That you don't really think about unless yeah. it's a foreign legacy. Okay. Well, uh, I'll go um, with that segue into my next one. Um, Matt Damon. Um, he is probably close to the top of my list, even though these aren't in any order. Um, I, I really enjoy watching Matt Damon in uh, all of his movies, um, well, all the ones that I've seen. Um, the Born series, Born uh, Identity, Supremacy, and Ultimatum. And then in, uh, I enjoy watching him in the Oceans movies. Yeah. Um, he is, he plays a funny, but um, somewhat uh, dorky, yeah, kind of yeah, guy. Pick, pickpocket, who kind of becomes... Uh, Kind of, he, he has a very interesting character arc throughout the films if you haven't seen it. Um, but he is, I actually didn't put him on my list because I thought you'd have him, but he is an interesting character because in the board movies he's, he can't really portray any emotion, which some people don't like, but I think he does it, he does it really well. And uh, then he also, like in the oceans, he shows that you can, he can uh, portray some emotion. And, and also in the, the one movie that I, uh, I was looking through Netflix to see some of the movies I watched and what movies I enjoy, and then I, I came across the, the Rainmaker, which I have just recently watched, and I really love that movie. And uh, Matt Damon really makes that movie, and he, and he uh, for those people that say, oh, he's very emotionless, um, in that movie he's not, and he, he does an amazing acting job in that movie. Yeah. Okay, um, for my next one, I'm going to say Benedict Cumberbatch uh, of the show Sherlock. Now, I haven't actually seen him in any of his movies, movie season. Um, I probably will at some point, but uh, yeah, I'm sure. Well, I mean, yeah, of course I'll it. But I mean, like, that he's physically yes, I don't not just his voice. Even though he does have a cool voice for Spock. Anyways, um, 
from just the Sherlock seasons alone, he is a really, really good actor. This is from the BBC series, not the other Sherlock movies. Um, but he, it's just a very, a very intriguing um, build-up of Sherlock's personality. He fits the role perfectly, I think. And I can't really think of anyone else who could do such a good job portraying Sherlock. I completely agree with everything you just said. Thank you. I think. I zoned out there for a minute, but anyways. Um, the next one I will list on my list <laughs> is uh, someone you might not recognize by name, uh, Henry, or Harry Morgan, sorry, I can't read my own writing, Harry Morgan. Um, no, I've not seen the show MASH, but uh, that is probably what he's best known for. Um, the ones that I have seen him in is, the show, the show that I have seen him in, it, seen him in, <laughs> seen him in, yes, is uh, Dragnet, he plays, um, Joe Friday's uh, partner, uh, Bill Gannon, and uh, he's a funny character in every movie that I've seen him in. He also plays in many classic Disney movies, such as uh, The Snowball Express and uh, The Apple Dumpling Gang, uh, right again. I don't remember if he's in the first one. But uh, he, he's in many of those old Disney movies, and he plays sort of, usually he plays the same uh, sort of uh, nutty, sort of eccentric um, older gentleman. And so, uh, I, I enjoyed him, and um, if you've seen him in anything, uh, you know, let us know, and maybe there's something that I missed in his end that you really enjoy. Yeah. Um, alright, so for my next one, I'm going to say Jennifer Lawrence from, well, she's in quite a few really good movies, but from The Hunger Games is what I've seen her in, um, and Catching Fire, the sequel to The Hunger Games. <laughs> um, but she, when she plays Katniss Everdeen, the girl on fire, and she does a really good really good job in that. And I'm gonna do a good impression. <laughs> so it's like girl on fire. Uh, that's not a good translation. And it's really good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so she is she impersonated I mean, not impersonates, acts as Katniss uh, really well. She uh, can portray the emotion that she feels, which is a good thing, especially uh, from like the book to the movie transition, especially when it's written in first person, that's uh, a hard thing mm -hmm. to portray. So, and she does excellent job of that. So. Yep, well, that'll lead me into uh, my, uh, the actress that I have on here. Um, we just recently watched the movie Gravity with Sandra Bullock. And, uh, and, um, Yes, it was very good, and what impressed me most probably about it was that she was, she was basically the character. Uh, George Clooney was in it for a bit, but, spoiler alert, but uh, wow, she was basically the only character. And to uh, come off of the level of emotion and uh, uh, depth that her character has for being the only one basically in the movie, uh, I, I thought it was very impressive, yeah. But, I'm pretty sure that, like, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure they didn't shoot it in space. <laughs> so, uh, I'm assuming they shot it in front of a green screen or blue screen or something. And so, just, just to be able to portray all that emotion did. and stuff <laughs> in front of a green screen by yourself in an astronaut suit, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. And then the other movie I've seen her in is uh, While You Were Sleeping with uh, Bill Pullman. <laughs> as well. And that movie is a romantic comedy. It is the only romantic comedy I've seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really good. Um, I, she was really good in that. I like her better in Gravity though, probably. Um, I gotta say my next one for the final actor I have on my list would be Jeffrey Donovan from the show Burn Notice. Now a few weeks back we did um, our tops on our top 10 uh, TV shows and I didn't have Burn Notice on my list because that, I haven't watched it yet. But um, <laughs> explain it. <laughs> but uh, I have recently started watching it, and I'm really liking it. Um, and the reason I put Jeffrey Donovan, who plays the main character Michael Weston, on my list is that he not only plays the co covert ops guy stuck in Miami, um, but he plays so many different characters that Michael Weston is playing. So it's like Inception of acting. So um, and he does a really good job. It's interesting to see all the different viewpoints he comes at it from and that's all I have to say about that. And I have no comment on that because I have yet to watch Burn Notice. Alright, uh, I'll go on to my final one. That's alright with you. <laughs> um, and and he has played in such classics as Top Gun, Mission Impossible, Mission Impossible 2, Mission Impossible 3, Mission Impossible 4, uh, Minority Report, and uh, one of my all-time favorite movies, Valkyrie. And
and he is, if you haven't guessed by now, Tom Cruise. Um, I know you like him in movies like Jack Reacher, Night and Day, which oh, yeah, I haven't yeah, seen yeah. either of those yet. Well, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and, uh, but I like him for uh, his role in Valkyrie, because um, in the Mission Impossible movies, he plays the action hero, uh, but you don't see much much emotion. You do, but it's not uh, the same kind of emotion you see in Valkyrie, where he has his family, and he's fighting his for his country. Or blown off. Yeah, and he's missing an eye. And, and so it's... Which well, he actually got his eye stabbed out for the role. Yeah, he's a bad actor. Anyways, uh, so, also, so that's why he is... Do you want to hear facts about Tom Cruise that we no. him? No. He is only 5'7". 5'6 five, or 5'7". So next time... Well, now everyone's gonna hate you because for me, like for me, I guess I see that as short. Some of you, I'm not trying to offend the short population of you who is watching this, so don't don't hate me for that. I guess I shouldn't have said that. But anyway, fired. For me, it's just when I'm when I'm looking at like the other night I was watching Mission Impossible too, and it's a pretty good movie. But when at the very the Mission very Impossible. end, the very end, it's like right, like two minutes now. Oh. Anyways, the very end, the, the fight scene, it was just like going all cool and stuff, and then I remember he was fighting seven, and I was like, oh man, he's short. That well, was over. Anyway, since you ruined my day, uh, we'll end this episode. If you have any uh, actors or actresses who are your favorite, comment them in the description. Also, comment new ideas for uh, more talks in the, no, in the, in the comment section. <laughs> uh, they need to think of a better way to say that than comment in the comment section. Put your thoughts and feelings in the yeah. section. And uh, if you have any ideas for new shops, let us yeah. know. Uh, We're always looking for new ideas. Yeah, and that's it, guys. See you later. <laughs> Please like, comment, and subscribe. I thought you already said that. You already said comment. Okay, so like, goodbye.